Welcome to The Recovering Perfectionist, where you'll learn all the hacks you need to get started and finished on your business or project. You'll connect with successful entrepreneurs who are in perfectionist rehab, unapologetically experimenting and balancing life, business, family, and me time. I'm your host and Chief Recovering Perfectionist, Claire Barton. Hello, everybody. It's Claire Barton from The Recovering Perfectionist here, and I have got the gorgeous Melinda Kiddo with me today. How are you going, Melinda? I'm fabulous. Fantastic. (laughs) Now, Melinda is, amongst many other things, a beautiful online business coach and messaging strategist. What does it all mean? You can tell us what it means. Ah, what does it mean? Um, So I work with really mega talented uh, service-based businesswomen who have a fantastic service and know that they can create like incredible transformation in their clients' lives. But I find a lot of these women struggle to actually articulate what they do in a compelling way. So I guess that fancy title just means that I work with these women to help them kind of really nail their business message so that it's like, it just cuts through the bullshit online and gets like the right people to sit up and go, Oh my God, that's exactly what I need. So that's what that means. (laughs) I totally love it. And as you know, and probably as people listening know uh, such a big part of what I'm doing these days is also around content and message and making sure that um, you know we've been doing the five-day challenge this week it's probably a few weeks ago by the time this goes to air but um, the first thing that we do is to try and refine your core message and it was a really interesting learning for me um, because a lot of people were coming into the group and sharing um, their kind of elevator pitch Mm. which to me is definitely intrinsically related to your core message but it's not the same thing yeah so uh, I'm totally, totally digging, having a bit of a chat with you about this and unwrapping what it all kind of means. So yeah. um, maybe before we kind of go any further into all of that sort of thing, can you tell us about why it's important to understand your core message and um, who needs to know what the core message is and how do you kind of get it across and maybe some of the processes that you go through? I know that's like 15 questions in one. Yeah, no worries. But, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me. Um, no, you might ask, have to ask a few of those again. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, um, I've, I've come to the realisation that messaging is like fundamental to your business. And I think it's one of those things that's overlooked and not that people don't understand how important it is, but they just don't spend the time to really sit with what their message is. And I actually just did a live stream on this because there needs to kind of be a bit of a distinction because I think sometimes when we talk about message, we think that it has to be like some, something from deep within our soul that like, I've got this message that I need to shake the world with. And maybe you do. And that's absolutely awesome. But when, when I'm talking about messaging, I'm simply talking about being able to describe what you do Mm. in a compelling way that makes sense and that makes people actually, it compels them to take this particular action that you want them to take, like to download your free thing or to buy your product or your service. It's, it's about how you communicate your message (laughs) in a way that makes people take a particular action. Mm. So I think some people go, they, they sit with, oh, well, what is my message? And they're searching for some profound, you know, spiritual thing. Yeah. But a lot of the time it's simply like, well, just can you describe what you do in a way that makes people go, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I need. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I, I totally agree. And I think when we first, often when we first start, A, it's different to what it looks like six months later, 12 months later yeah. and all that sort of thing. But you're right, we do spend so much time agonising over um, purpose and these big, deep and meaningful and, and people come up with these amazing words and it sounds beautiful. Mm. But when you tell someone, they still go, so what do you do? Yeah, so, exactly. What do you actually do? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know I've definitely been guilty of it. And, uh, you know, there was a, fa- a bit of, I guess it's a bit of a fad a while ago where you kind of made up your own names and you made up <laughs> your own words and it was very interesting and it was very creative and it was really fun but it still was really freaking confusing to the people yes. you're talking to. So oh my gosh. That's one of my big, that's one of my bugbears actually, because it's um, like, we think that we're being really clever by coming up with this thing. And, and I think secretly there's this thing, like if I come up with a really interesting title, then people yeah. go, Oh, what does I'm that mean? Like that. Yeah. But they, they don't do that. They just yeah. go, huh? And then they move on. Like, but, I mean, one thing with messaging, it's like, it's great to be clever, but it's so much more important to be clear. 
Yes. Because you only have that millisecond to make an impression and to have somebody go, oh, yes, I need, I need to speak to you. Yeah. And if, if you're going, well, I'm a transformational, blah, 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 like just you smoosh all these words together yeah. to, to yeah. create this fancy title, it's like yeah. I don't get it. Like, just be clear. It's so like if you were, if you say something like that, there is a certain group of people who go, "Oh yeah, I totally get it." Like I know it, but they're in the same sort of thing, and they're probably doing similar work or whatever. But the people who are more likely to actually need your services are the ones who are still going, "Huh?" And I think there's, uh, I mean, in in the online business world, and certainly the people who I work with very often, they are doing these things that most people have never heard of before. They do have mm. modalities, or they do have that core message that is kind of different. And often it's like. They know what we need. We think we need something else or, we, yes. you know, whatever. And that there's that kind of big gap between that whole um, sell them what they want, give them what they need sort of thing. Yes. So you've got to do the want stuff. You've got to talk in the same language. And that's why I think things like avatar interviews and just really paying attention to the sort of language and the sort of, um, yeah, how people talk and how people talk to each other and that sort of thing when mm-hmm. they're your ideal client and getting you know, niching that down is so difficult. We all know it, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't come into business and automatically nail your message and get all of your perfect yeah. customers the first day. And if you do, start selling that as a course because uh, <laughs> that happens sort of thing. Package that shit up. <laughs> package that shit up, exactly. And get Melinda Kiddo to help you with your messaging on it, right? Um, but, yeah, um, yeah so, so can you tell us a bit about, like, why is this important to you? Have you had some sort of messaging journey for one yes. word. I, mean, I hate the word journey. But, um, is there something like, why is this important to you? Why is this your thing? Mm, isn't, it, isn't it funny that often what we struggle with the most is actually what we're meant to end up serving the world with? <laughs> because I would say that messaging, um, I've always been a great communicator. So I, I can write well, um, I can communicate well on video and all that kind of thing. So I I kind of always thought that it was a strength of mine and I would get good engagement on my blog posts and videos and whatever. They're like, Oh, I love this. And which is all great. But what I actually struggled with is then getting people to actually then do anything about it. Yeah, sure. Um, And so if I look back, I would go, man, my messaging used to be so shit. (laughs) And I think I had that confusion with like, oh, what is my deep message I want to share with the world? And instead of just actually going, well, I need to talk about what I do in a way that makes people do something. Yeah. So, and it's just so funny because this phrase, I'd heard it for so many times so many years of like out of your mess comes your message (laughs) and I needed to have that experience of having good communication but not having compelling messaging because now it has made me realize that it literally is fundamental to everything that you do if you can't talk about what you do in a compelling way that makes sense then nothing else matters and I don't want to say your business is dead in the water but like kind of dead in the water like you've got to be able to communicate what you do in a compelling way and I think one of my um I'm definitely not alone in this I was trying to leapfrog ahead to all of these like six figure and seven figure business strategies like I wanted the funnel and I wanted this and that and all these all these really fancy puzzle pieces but none of that matters in the slightest If like, to me, it comes down to three core skills. If you don't know how to create an offer that is irresistible to the people that you want to attract, if you don't know how to talk about that offer in a compelling way, and then if you don't know how to sell, you don't have the the foundations of any kind of business. Mm. And I was trying to like leapfrog over that stuff because it was kind of a bit hard and I didn't want to sell and I didn't want to, I don't, you know, I didn't want to do all those sort of yucky things. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, I'll just build a funnel because uh-huh. then it's all automatic and that'll sell for me. And then I don't have to get on the phone. Um, <laughs> so I was trying to leapfrog ahead to these advanced business strategies. But what I, what I've come to realize is that gosh, if, if you're trying to build a funnel, great. But if you can't put an irresistible offer in there and if you can't talk about it in a way that's, you know, going to make people that do anything it. about yeah. it, and then if you don't actually know intrinsically how to sell just one-on-one, how is that funnel going to do anything? It's not. Mm. So I guess that, that's my messaging journey. And it's it's funny, like, when you actually start to look, look at what, what am I actually good at? 
And I, when I sat down and did that, I'm like, well, actually, I've always been really good with words and really good with saying, like finding a way to say what, um, what somebody's trying to say in a, in a nice way. Yep. And so yep. I, I'm, I'm the girl amongst my group of friends that were like, there's a guy on Tinder, like, oh, what should I say? I'm like, okay, you should say this, this, this. And they're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> so it's kind of like what I've naturally done and I just, yep. um, I just haven't made that connection Mm. and I suppose the culmination of that like once I actually sat down and thought well what's my special thing because I was trying to promote myself as a business coach for a long time um, which is the service that I was providing but I just wasn't getting anybody putting their hand up and going yes that's what I need yeah because there are thousands of business coaches out there and there are thousands of um like what does even a business coach mean? Like I could be a business coach for corporate environments. I could be a business coach focusing on bricks and mortar retail stuff. And so the, the biggest shift for me was actually going, well, what is the thing that I want to hang my hat on that I want to go? This is what I'm awesome at. This is my shtick. It's what I use to get people in the door. And literally the minute that I went, you know, I think I'm pretty good at messaging. That's what I naturally seem to help people with. The minute I made that decision was the transformational point for my business. (laughs) Because I literally, I did a three minute live stream as I was walking out the door. I'm like, oh my God, I've just had this epiphany. Like, this is what I should specialize in. This is what I'm really good at. And I didn't mention any links. I didn't put any offers out, but I had three people (laughs) stalk me, find my website, book in a session, and all of them became my first ever premium clients Crazy. in a week. Yeah. And I didn't even say, hey, if you want to be a client or if you want my help with, no, I just said, oh, my God, this is what I'm really good at. This is yeah. what I want to specialise in. Yeah. And it was that. Do you know what? And I, I, Everything that you just said, being good with words, being the one in, like I'm my sister and my, my dad and I used to play a game where we'd get the dictionary and you'd pick a number. So you'd go to the page, you'd say column one, two, three or four, and give a number for which number down and we'd have to spell the word and um, give the definition of it. And that was like our idea of hours worth of fun. So <laughs> I'm, all, I'm the same. Good with words, good with like all that kind of articulating and I get really frustrated when someone can't articulate really, really well, yeah. um, mainly because I just want to jump in and give them a hug and say, it's okay, this is what we're going to do instead. Like this is how we're yeah. going to articulate it. Yeah. So pretty much everything that you just said, including the getting to the point of realising what your niche is, yeah. You know, what she said. I don't know which side the. <laughs> um, ha, um, and I, I just want to just pause there for a second because for mm. anyone who's listening who is um, not at that point, you know, I know I think most people come into business and we're told, like, there's always someone who says, you have to niche, you're too broad, you have to niche. Mm. And we, we go like this, yeah, 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 I want to work with women. In I, I've already niched. Yeah. That's niche. Like, that's pretty niche. Yeah. And then I was exactly the same. Like, I kind of dabbled with. VA and ops manager and then business coach and now I'm like actually with everything with batshit crazy and um, the challenge and the retreats and all of that sort of thing it's content strategy and Mm. it's kind of scary to say I'm a content strategist because you are niche and then you're expected to know a lot more like about messaging or about content whatever you kind of niche in yeah but it is exactly what happens is when people go oh that's what you do okay cool yeah I need someone to do that and I'm gonna sign up and you know when I and, and it it was a process in that I tried things. I worked out what I definitely didn't want to do. I kept trying things and worked out some things that I really love doing. Um, and also some things that I love doing for myself, but hated doing for other people and vice versa. Yes. Yeah. And it is a process like there's, I, I don't think there's any way that you can come into a business and go, this is exactly the person I'm going to work with. I'm going to say no to everyone else. If anyone asks me to do anything outside this scope of work, so I'm going to say no. Mm. Like when we first start, we're just like, yes, I can do that how do I do that? I better go Google something and work out how to do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I'll just go and watch YouTube so I can work out how to do that. (laughs) We totally kind of get into that space of fear of like, if I say no, I'll go somewhere else. Or if I say no, I'll look stupid or whatever. So we kind of do work it out. And that's part of the process, right? Because that very quickly shows you the stuff that is not your zone of genius. Like I'm really techie. And in the corporate world, I was really techie, but in online business world, one out of five techie. (laughs) Like yeah. not techie, not yeah. very techie, yeah. um, but I had to go through that process to understand it. So yeah. I think, yeah, exactly. When you get to the point, um, we've kind of gone on a bit of a tangent, but in that sense, like the messaging is almost like you've got to kind of just try it out. And yeah. I've talked a lot oh about gosh. experimentation and play on this podcast yeah. about 
um, giving yourself permission to not get it perfect straight up. And like I, I used to, I agonized at the beginning of my business. Like, what do I call myself though? Like, what's my title? What do I put on my business card or my email signature? And I would change it literally probably every three days. I'd change it on my Facebook page, sometimes on my website and definitely on my um, email signature. Like every time I came up with a new idea. So I started off by saying, um, like, I'm really good at organizing things. So do, do you need me to organize something for you? I'm planning. Can I plan something for you? And then I was like, I want to be a VA. And then I, like, you kind of just go through all these different iterations when you, you kind of have a bit of a play around with it and work out mm. what, and then some people were like, so what is that? And you're like, okay, that didn't really work. And I was one point calling myself like an organizational time bending guru of some sort. Like what the hell does this even mean? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's totally yeah. a process. Oh, and it's, and you, you, have, you have to go through it. And, and this is the hard thing because when you get to a certain point and then you look backwards, you can always connect the dots of like, man, I needed that lesson here. That's why this didn't work. So looking yeah. back, you can connect the dots and realize that everything was working to bring you to this point. Yeah. But it is very hard when you're standing here and looking forward oh, that yeah. those dots will continue to connect. Yeah. But it, it's a total trust thing. And if you, yep. if you can look back and go, well, it's, they all connected here, so it's going to continue going forward. Yeah. But I think one of the other things as well that you just mentioned that is a real fear around niching is that it's kind of an ego thing sometimes. It's like, oh, but I'm so much more than that. Like I can't niche yeah. down to just messaging because I actually help people with all these other things. Yeah. And, yes, that's great. I'm sure you have a buffet of things that you can help people with. Totally. But that is going to destroy your messaging is if you keep on trying to offer this all you can eat buffet like if you're standing on the street corner going i can help you with anything yeah like nobody comes over and goes oh can you help me with this like yeah. I, I literally see people and it's it's from the best intentions doing a post for a free coaching session mm. and it's like we can jump on the phone and talk about anything that you want and from their heart they're probably thinking well this is a great offer because Literally Same. everybody could take it up, yeah. but nobody does. Like they're the posts that get no likes and no comments. But if you were to actually be specific, like who needs some help with like creating a content plan? Like people go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I need. Yeah. Like you have to give something like, um, if you, I always use the analogy of like rock climbing that you have to give them enough grip to kind of like, if, if they're climbing up that wall and each of those ledges are kind of a little bit slippery and a little bit vague, like you've got to give them enough grip to that, like to attach onto what you're doing. Go, yes, that's exactly what I need. What it doesn't mean though, is that you have to scrap the rest of your services and just go, I no longer offer these. Do those things, that's right. Because for me, messaging is simply my, it's simply my way of opening the door. It's my way of saying, hey, is this something that you really struggle with? Because I see a lot of women do struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And then they go, yes, that's, a, that's what I need help with. Then when I connect with somebody on the phone, I can give them some strategies to help with their messaging. But then I can also say, you know what? It sounds to me like if like you're really not very confident in your whole sales process, or it sounds to me like you're you're struggling to put together an offer that's really compelling. So I can still say like I actually help with those things as well. Yeah. So if you were to work with me, not only can I help you with this, but I'll help you with this and this. And imagine if like imagine what your business would look like if we got all those things happening and, and rocking for you. Yeah. And then they've gone from like, oh, my God, I need that to, oh, my God, I need you. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Like niching can be scary for people, but you must, well, in my opinion anyway, because it's what I see working, is yeah. you must niche to at least open the door. And yeah. then when you open the door, you still have your buffet. You don't yeah, have sure. to give any of yeah. that up. Yeah. But they're not going to see the buffet unless you have the specials pulled out the front. I just made that. Hey. Up, let's go with it. <laughs> we totally love analogies on this show. As in, I totally love analogies and I'm always using really, really bad ones. So well done. No, that was really cool. I, I'll write that, that one down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and um, it, no, I think it totally makes a lot of sense. And it's, it is scary because it does mean that you have to be very specific and you do have to be shit hot at that thing that you're niching in because that's what you're going to be known for. And that's what, you, as you said, that's mm. your specials board. If your specials board is, I don't know, wrong, it's got, I don't know, wasabi peas on it. 
<laughs> well, um, see, I told you I'm really bad at analogies, but if it's, it's got right. the wrong stuff on it or if it, I, I, I was right there, there, like I was right there. Totally there. Hey, you knew where I was trying to go with that. Um, <laughs> then, you know, there's still got to be a level of consistency. Like you can't yeah. say, hey, I do um, content strategy, come over here and do some content strategy and then go, oh, actually, I'm not really good at content strategy, but I can show you all these other things. Like you've still got to be yeah. fantastic at that first thing. But yeah, I totally agree. Um, and it's got to be something that you love. Like it's got to be something that you could talk about, not forever because you can always shift if you need to, but like it's got to be something that, you, like you said before, you might love doing it for yourself, but do you actually love doing it for others? And exactly. what I love about it is it's it's really, it's not easy per se, but there's very simple tweaks that people can make that can radically transform their results. Mm. And I say that because that was my experience, like literally just going, okay, I'm going to specialise in this was all it took for me to go from not making any money in my business or like a little trickle of income to like being able to sign premium clients totally easily. Yeah. And I don't say that to sound arrogant. I just say that because that's literally my experience. Yeah. And when you get your messaging right, I don't have a funnel that works right now. I just have a very simple process of I know how to make an irresistible offer. Yeah. I know how to message around it and I'm comfortable selling it. Uh -huh. And that can take you to whatever heights of business you want. And then I'll make a funnel later. Yeah. Okay, I have two questions. I'm going to ask both of them so I don't forget. The first one sure. is when you're niching, how do you know when you've gotten to the right balance of not being so specific that no one, there's like one person in the world who can work with you and being too broad? So that's the first question. Mm. And what was the second question? Uh, irresistible. I want to come back to irresistible because mm -hmm. I want to know what actually makes an irresistible offer. So that, that's my second question. So first yeah. of all, how like how how niche is too niche and how broad is too broad how do you find that balance um i think if you're i think you're probably too broad if you're not to a point where people are like oh my gosh that's exactly what i need mm -hmm. like you you have to come down that tight i actually don't know if you can be so niche that like there are 8 billion, is it 8 billion? How many billion yeah, people are in like this that. world? And how many billion of those are online? <laughs> and, and if, you know, so there, there is a market for everything. That's like, so true. you know, like <laughs> there would, there's a, a niche for butterfly collectors. There are a niche for like mm. sock, you know, like whatever. There, there is a niche for everything. <laughs> and so it's, if you can find that niche of people, and build great messaging around what you're trying to do, there is a market for everything. Yeah, so okay. I, I'm not actually sure that you can go so niche. Ooh, um, you heard it here first. <laughs> you let's let's not like put that as, you know, <laughs> maybe don't quote me as that, but yeah, okay. I, like I think genuinely it's, it's more about your messaging around that offer okay. and it's about being able to put that offer in front of, the eyes right, of that people. potential audience. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe that everybody is out there and yes, maybe your niche is super, super, super tight. That might mean that, mean that you need to be more premium, but it probably allows you to be more premium yeah, sure. if your niche yeah. is that tight. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I'd say about that. I think, Cool. but here's the caveat um, because sometimes like I, I encourage people to do market research and sometimes there is this feedback, like I can't find anybody to, to do my market research. It's like, okay, well, if you cannot find anybody who's prepared to answer a couple of questions for you who are in this particular target market, then perhaps you shouldn't be trying to create a product or service for that target market. Okay. Because if you can't even find anybody to answer a couple of questions, then how are you going to find anybody who's actually then going to be willing to buy? Mm. I think, you know, Truth you, bomb, baby, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think, I, and I think I see this a lot as well. So a lot of people who I've um, worked with or who I've been kind of um, moving through business at the same pace with we've started around the same time we've all kind of done those avatar interviews and some people redo them or they've got a new product so they redo them and it is definitely one thing that I see in a couple of like the mastermindy sort of groups that I'm in about people saying I've put this thing out here for avatar and no one's answered no one's even liked it like it's a really actually very prevalent thing and part part of me thinks it's because everyone wants it and it, it, it can be time consuming and all that sort of thing mm. um, and in my experience most people most of the time if you get 10 people say yes you'll get five people who actually show up and do it yeah. right 
um, which is unfortunate because I think there's some absolutely awesome things. I, I tend not to try and kind of get involved because it's just, it does end up being a bit time consuming at the moment. Yeah. But back when I was starting, it was invaluable. But I think um, it's, it's the same as doing an offer if you're selling something. Mm. Got to sound, it's got to be intriguing. It's got to be interesting and it has to yeah. be valuable because time is valuable to people. So if I'm going to spend half an hour answering your questions, I want to know exactly what the half an hour looks like when I that I'm going to get back. Even if like I know the idea of avatar interviews is that you take it away and then maybe design something, but I kind of still need to know what realm you're in and what context and yeah. do, is it something that I need? So if we come back to what we talking, what you're saying before and you've mentioned the word irresistible a few times and I know yeah. I see that in your messaging online all the time which is such a sexy word like it just is exactly what it needs to is exactly what everything needs to be and it's that kind of mag magnetism and mm. irresistibility and exactly like I said for people to go oh my god I need that mm. um, and you just quickly like I, I, I'm sort of the same thing and I've gone like I've said before I've kind of gone through that whole I do this and I do it and people are like so, so what do you do and mm. when I just say I organize stuff or I help you get your business systems organized or I help you plan your content it like it doesn't have to be this big long thing but that's exactly right. then people go Oh my God, I need you in my life. Or, you know, yeah. now it's sort of at the point where most, most, not most of the time, but often someone else will say, that's Claire, she helped me get my business shit together or she helped yeah. me. And then everyone says, that's what I need because it's, it's so basic and it's so simple and there's an outcome kind of thing yeah. without even saying it. Yeah. Um, so for people who are either starting out or established, like how, is there an audit thing? Is there a process to becoming irresistible? Is it something that you have to work with a Melinda Kiddo to? Oh, well, of course. <laughs> like, is it a thing that you can do by yourself or is it something that you need to have a, an expert with? What's, what's kind of the ideal process to become irresistible in your messaging? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, obviously I would say, yes, you definitely need to work with me. There's, <laughs> there's no secrets I could tell you here, but that's not true. Um, one of the first steps that I would get people to focus on when it comes to making their offer irresistible as opposed to like eh, cool maybe I would, maybe I'd be interested like to you have to focus on solving a problem yeah and not just solving a problem but solving a conscious problem that your ideal people have sure. because like I mean gosh there are a, a billion examples that I could give here but what what many people do is they focus on the how they focus on what they believe is their unique special source. And so you'll see a lot of posts in Facebook groups and things where they're kind of going, you know, here's three free NLP sessions and they're, they're focusing on the modality or the tool or they're, they'll say, um, I'm going to show you how to, like, and, and they'll describe the, the actual thing yep. that they're going to teach. Yep. But nobody gives a shit about that because they are not conscious that they need NLP. Sure. Or yep. what NLP could do for them. Nobody's sitting here necessarily looking for an NLP or a hypnotherapist or a whatever practitioner. They're not necessarily looking to learn a particular process. They are only conscious of their particular problem mm -hmm. and how that problem manifests in their life and then what they wish they could have instead. Yes. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what they're conscious of. And so that's usually my first shift that I talk to people about, like, fuck your process, fuck your new modality because nobody cares. And a lot of people actually don't know what that modality can do for them. Mm. So when it comes to your messaging, it's about calling out a conscious problem that they have mm. and not just saying, do you ever, like, do you wish you could lose weight? Like, I mean, if, if we just look at that being the problem, think of the many thousand of um, modalities that you could lose to help somebody lose weight and then the different processes or the different things that you like the different ways that yeah. we could help somebody to lose weight so many people are focused on the ways and the modalities but this person over here is just feeling fat yeah and so you know it's not about going do you feel fat because I can offer you but like it, it's about kind of just so my favorite way to describe this is that great messaging happens when you join the conversation that they are already having in their head. Good, huh? Good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you can actually enter that conversation that they're already having in their head and talk about not just the thing that they want to lose weight, but 
how that shows up for them. Like, you know, feeling embarrassed when yeah. like my kids got a party at <laughs> flip out tomorrow, like the trampoline place. And you know, my first thought is, Oh God, I've got to get on a trampoline and things are going to be bouncing around. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's the secret stuff yeah, that yeah. people only talk about in their head mm. and they, they would very rarely voice that. And so if you can actually join that conversation and, you know, maybe use it as a self-example, like, oh my God, I used to be so embarrassed when my kids would get an invitation to a party because that would mean I'd have to jump around. And <laughs> then people are like, oh my God, me That's too. True. And yeah. they're all, they're hooked into whatever it is that you have to mm. say. And then you can kind of go, you know, like all I wanted was to just be able to put on whatever outfit from my cupboard and just know that I, I wouldn't look like a stringed up pork roll or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's the conversation that they're having in their head? Because now it actually doesn't matter what offer, solution, what modality, what process I'm going to use to help you with that. But you already believe that I can because yeah. I get it. Yeah. So that sounds like it's 99% of the whole thing is to, yeah. um, is to get it, is to understand. And so yeah. in that sort of sense, um, I guess most of the time, like you said, we, our, our sort of thing that we do is what we needed two, three, four, five years ago. So yeah, awesome. in that sense, it's important to tap into that and to not try and be someone else and not try and use words that we wouldn't use ourselves because, uh, and I, we talk about this a lot um, with content that when we come out of jobs or corporate or whatever, we've kind of had to take our whole personality out of our work. And accidentally, when we come into our business, we're trying to be professional. Like we, we want to maintain that because that's yeah. what it is. But then you realize no one, no one gets what you're talking about because they're not in corporate world either. And, you know, exactly like you and I were talking about before we hit record today that I've listed this as explicit because I want to be able to swear because I swear in real mm. life and that's just how I talk. As yeah. much as I probably did this morning because I'm very, very tired. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I don't want to, and I don't swear to be offensive and I certainly don't want to upset anyone. But also if someone's going to get upset with the odd swear word, they're probably not like my ideal client. And of course. And together anyway. So, of course. It's, and it, it is a massive block to get to the point of being okay with using your own language and having your own voice and having your opinion. Like we always talk about in our family, having the courage of your conviction. So if you've got mm -hmm. an opinion bloody well say it and stick to it. Like, yeah. you know, obviously you can be flexible. Anyway, we're getting off on completely different tangents. So but but that's what we are craving. Like in the, yeah, it's in, in real life. It's, and like it's not this Instagram authentic. It's yeah. real, real authentic, and right? There's, there's online business, but now it's social business. Like it's, it's the majority of it's done through social media. And what do we crave? Like um, I always use Constance Hall as a great example. Like why has she built such a following? <laughs> because she says the shit that every Everybody is thinking and exactly. if you look through the comments it's like oh my god I could have written this myself oh my god I feel exactly the same way and it's not that you need to necessarily like lay it all out on the table when you're in business but you you've that I mean authentic gets thrown around a lot yeah. and I think some people like try to be authentic and if you're trying to be authentic then you're not being authentic <laughs> um, but genuinely like it's I, I don't necessarily have to lay everything out on the table, but if I can just actually speak at a level, it's that internal conversation. Like mm. the, the biggest thing for me, and this was actually before I realized that messaging was my thing. The biggest comment I used to get on my blogs and stuff was like, Oh my God, I could have written this myself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's tapping into what the world looks like through yeah. your ideal client's eyes yeah. and not just like I'm overweight, I need to lose weight as yeah. an example. It's like, well, what does that mean? How does that show up for me? What does that make me think and why, say and feel? Why is it a bad thing in my head? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then why, uh, like, what do I wish I could experience instead? Mm. And here's where people get so vague when it's in, when it comes to their messaging. Like so many people say, we'll do a, a, a session. And so you can start to have the life and business that you want. Right. I mean, great. <laughs> but what does that actually mean? And that, that doesn't get anybody to go, oh, my God, that I need that. But when you can be a little bit more specific and say, you know, to create the kind of business that you can, um, you know, be, able, be there to pick up your kids when the school bell rings, that you can, like, that's not get, feeling like you're changing your laptop 24-7. I mean, those examples aren't amazing. But when you can actually tap into the things that, like totally, specific that actually things. you on a day-to-day -day basis yeah exactly cool. like not just 
like here's how the problem manifests in my life and then here's what oh my gosh if I could have that that would be I'd be so much happier and you know just going you'll feel better you'll feel happier nobody gives a shit about that but when you give it a specific example imagine what life would look like if you could do this they're like oh my god that's what I need I need to speak to you yeah that's like that's the crux of what makes an offer irresistible is just being able to look through your potential client's eyes and go this is what shit and this is what you want instead, yeah. then it almost doesn't matter what my offer is or what my solution is because you've already cooked into the fact that I can help you yeah. get there. Yeah. And uh, I, this is just so absolutely gold. And I, I totally resonate with absolutely everything you're saying. I think it's really, really valuable information. Um, it's just completely awesome. And I think like one other thing I would add. Can we that, have like a firework effect going yeah, off on it? Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'll totally get the, no, I can't do that. I, I told you before, I thought I was techie and I'm not techie. I'm not as techie as I thought I was. Um, but um, it also doesn't have to be like this epic, amazing, wordy, like these are all your problems and this is how you wish you felt and this is how it shows up. Like it doesn't have to be a 500 word post in a Facebook group if you're trying to sell something. Some of the most effective um, offers that I've put out has literally said, um, are you sick of being disorganised? Do you want to get more organised? Sign up here. And it's literally like 20 words or whatever and a link. Yeah. And some of those because it's, it is simple and it, it is very easy to understand what the shit I'm talking about. It's not mm-hmm. like this convoluted that you get halfway through and go, what was she talking about? Yeah. yeah, maybe, but I don't know. I'll just go and read the next thing. Um, so have a play with the format as well as the words and, um, you know, uh, something else that you were saying before that, you know, it, you use actual words that you would use. You don't, you know, we're kind of often told about, you know, these sexy words or um, hypnotic words and whatever and like yawn. Some of them are great. Like some, some words do hit home, but they've got to be actual words and not just words that you got off a blog that said these are the top 100 words to use to get your blog read. Like, do you know what I mean? It's got to actually be a word that you use. Um, and I, one activity that I often do with people is to ask your friends and family what words you always use. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm always going, well, I've got a three and a four-year-old and they'll, they'll come out with something and I'll be like, where did she get that from? Where did she? And then the next minute, the next day, I'll say it and I'm like, oh, I say it, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you say that all the time, but I don't even realise. So yeah. those sorts of things you use all the time. Like I, you know, and, and everyone's got them. Everyone's got words that we religiously used whether it's in context or not like I always say gorgeous and I went on this thing once to try and not write or say the word gorgeous for a week and I think I probably lasted about 15 minutes or something <laughs> my word like it's a word that I use I always yeah. say gorge and gorgeous so yeah. why would I stop using that in my copy because yeah. when you talk to me on, on the phone or on Skype I'm going to say it all the time yeah so what like yeah I just this, this may be a tangent, but I actually, I, I put a fun little experiment up in a group um, just last night, which was like, what is the phrase or term that oh, absolutely yeah, that. drives you insane? Like it, you can't stand it, even if it's for completely irrational reasons. And then a ton of people have commented. It's quite a funny thread. Um, but then one of the interesting things about that is then people going, oh my God, I, I say that all the time. I better stop saying it. So I've now added a follow-up question of like, if you, if you happen to be one of those people that uses a phrase that somebody else, that gives somebody else the shit, do you now feel like you need to change that? And if so, why? Mm. And my thing is <coughs> any spin on the word entrepreneur, in particular, mumpreneur. For me, I just, like, it just makes me want to vomit. Like, I, I hate that phrase. I feel like it's devaluing and, and like, diminishing. Like, oh, you're not a real entrepreneur. You just you're just a mumpreneur. Like, yeah. I hate that. But that does not mean that you should stop using it if you if that's a phrase that you really resonate with. Yeah. It, it just doesn't work for me. And that probably means that I'm not your ideal client. Yeah. Some other people would find that word incredibly empowering. Like I'm not just an entrepreneur, I'm a mumpreneur, which means yeah. I've, I've got all these other balls that I'm juggling in yeah. here as well. For some people, that's a strengthening thing. And when it comes to your messaging, if you are turning people off, Great, because yeah. it means you're saying something that people are actually paying you're attention to. People. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. People, yeah. You have to kind of, and it's, it's not that you need to be um, controversial for the sake of it, and like, look, mumpreneur isn't a controversial thing at all, <laughs> but like, you know, you don't have to be edgy or controversial just for the sake of it. Yeah. But if you're turning people off 
good because at the same time you're also turning people on if you're not getting any kind of emotional reaction from people then it means your messaging is beige and boring and nobody's giving a shit so you have to kind of it's taking the good with the bad and Mm. you know yeah like just say what works for you like some people would say oh my god i hate it when people call me gorgeous Okay, don't be a client of mine. Yeah. <laughs> I, one of my favourite, um, you know, those memes, I think I actually was given it as a birthday card or something probably from someone who knows me super well and it's these two like old um, old fashioned like from the 50s women and they've got their hair up in curlers, they're sitting at the hairdresser, yeah. got the apron on and the, that thing over the top of their head, whatever that was called mm. and they're like reading a magazine and they're looking all like gorgeous, there you yeah. go, gorgeous and one of them says, um, what did you tell that bitch when she said she didn't, like you and the other woman's like i said well then don't join my fan club (laughs) fine you don't like me that's cool don't like and uh, just that whole that is so relevant in business it's so hard it's definitely for me it's been one of the hardest things as a recovering perfectionist a recovering yes girl a recovering people pleaser to actually be okay with not with not being loved by every single person yeah is the hardest thing and it will probably all all my life be the biggest thing that I struggle with yeah um but that's okay because I'm I'm getting there like I'm yeah. really just going you know when I first started and, and I remember there was someone in a group and they said they had a hater or they got trolled or something and they were really upset about it but they also kind of felt okay about it because for uh, and then I remember a heap of people just going that's awesome you got your first hater if you yeah. got a hater you mean it means you're reaching people and people are listening and people are yeah have an opinion on your opinion, which is mm. awesome. And I was like, oh, my God, what if someone ever said that to me? <laughs> and then um, I got trolled probably six months ago and it totally blew, like it just totally, something just really hurt. But then I also felt like, hmm, yeah, well, i got a hater now. So, yeah, exactly. I've got one. Have you got any haters? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, and it's this whole sort of thing. But I think, you yeah. know, like I said, courage of your convictions is one of the biggest lessons and one of the biggest, one of the hardest things to kind of do. But it's really freaking empowering. It makes your message and your niche and the people you want to work with come out of the woodwork because mm. they, have, they get it too. And yeah. if they don't, it's okay not to work with everyone. It's okay to yeah. say no to people. And, and look, we, we, are in, <laughs> we are in business because we wanted to do things differently. Like yeah. how many women in particular left the corporate world because they didn't like the way it made them feel or what they were required to do. Like we are in this luxurious space of being able to create a business exactly how the fuck we want it to be. And swearing is a beautiful one because like if I'm creating a business and I'm attract, I'm deliberately attracting people that I want to work with. I'm sorry. I don't want to work with people who are going to get offended by the fact that I swear because, and this is a two way street, right? Because I don't want to feel like I need to censor myself because if I'm censoring a swear word, what else am I censoring as, as a way of not being offending offensive? Mm -hmm. And that also means from a client perspective that you won't get the best of me because I'm up here thinking and being conscious of, well, I hope I don't say the wrong thing and I hope I don't offend them. If you can just allow me to be my authentic self and just say whatever comes out, you will get the best of me. I'm not censoring myself or trying to be careful about saying the right or the wrong thing. So if you don't, want that if swearing offends you then please be a client of somebody else's who can authentically speak from their heart without Mm. swear words which is not me Um, like you won't get the best of me and I don't want to have to I don't want to be up here I just want to speak from here and the right people the thing is Yes, it turns some people off, but the ones who it turns on they are so turned on by it that they're like oh my god I love you and I would much rather say that people say that to me than go, eh, I mean, she's all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so true. Yeah. So true. We might wrap it up because we could definitely talk for hours and hours. Um, we could. Where's that wine? <laughs> people, yeah, seriously. People listening at home, we literally just chatted for about 15 minutes before and we were like, okay, let's hit record. Oh, but one more thing. <laughs> We definitely um, uh, can talk, um, as you can see. But Mel, what are some key takeaways? Like what actions can people take if they are as inspired by our conversation as I am? What can they actually go away and implement, start, stop, continue in their business that's going to make a really big difference in their messaging and um, connecting with the right people? Um, I I would say get as specific as you possibly can. (laughs) Like that 
if you think you're being specific, I, I reckon I can find another level for you. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that feels scary. Sometimes that feels like that you might be missing people. But the fact is, if you're being vague, if you're being general, you are missing them anyway, because it's not making anybody sit up and pay attention. Mm -hmm. I would rather have five people on a really specific thing go, yes, that's exactly what I need, than be trying to reach a thousand at a time and getting none. Mm -hmm. And when you do speak to those, like that select group of people and really hone in on the specific problem and the, and the way that it shows up for them in their life, they're 75% sold already. And I, I think that's the thing that people fear it and people fear niching down too much. But all, all my intention is by talking about messaging is to open the door to a conversation because there will be people out there listening right now that are like, oh my God, I need to talk to her. And then once that door is open, then I can still show you well, yeah. my buffet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's, that would be the biggest thing. Like I would get really specific on what you want to hang your hat on. Like what is the element of what you do that you could say, you know what, I, I'm a business coach or I'm a health coach or I'm a love coach or whatever, but I really specialize in helping you nail that first date or I really specialize it like what's the thing amongst your vast array of skills that you can go but I'm going to put this as my specials board out the front and this is what I'm going to use to actually get people in the door and then yeah when I, once I've taught you how to nail your first date of course you're going to want to learn how to like be able to communicate with your partner and keep sure. the love channels yeah. open like yeah. here's the rest of the things that I can help you with yeah, yeah, yeah. but what's going to actually get them in the yeah exactly yeah. Right, no buffet, only the sandwich board <laughs> at the front. I'm literally going to use that all the time now. I totally love this conversation and I will definitely be getting you back for the buffet another time because I would love to know all the other things that you do as well. Awesome. Uh, but thank you so much. So those people who are listening and do want to come and lovingly face stalk you, how can they find you? Um, oh, but how can we? How can we find you? Well, fortunately enough, I have an, a unique enough name that I'm pretty sure I'm the only one on Facebook. Actually, you know what? I think there's another mole who came along with the, name, the same name as me. So now there's now there's two. But you should be able to find me. So it's Melinda Kitto. That's K I T T O. Um, stalk me on Facebook, um, or you can visit my website, which is melindakitto.com. Um, I do offer a message makeover assessment, and this is one of my favourite things to do because it's you and me for. 20 20 minutes and we can just dig into really quickly the way that you're currently talking about your service or your business and some really subtle shifts that you can make that makes it a hell of a lot more compelling. So that's usually the first way that I go about connecting with people and, and getting them on the journey of getting their messaging like schmick. Great. I'm going to hang up and go and book one of those for myself. Please. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been just so much fun and so specific. Surprise, surprise. Excellent. Um, Nailed it. About your, um, your sandwich board. So thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate coming on the show. And yeah, we'll talk to you again real soon. Awesome. Thanks, Claire. All right. See you later. Bye. And that is absolutely it, my lovely. So I hope you've really enjoyed the episode. It was great fun recording that one, as it is with all of them. If you'd like to connect, I'd love to stay in touch with you. I have a beautiful Facebook group um, community at bit.ly forward slash the recovering perfectionist crew with all um, capital T, R, P and C. I'm also, I also have a massive goal this year to get 50,000 downloads on my podcast and I've got a YouTube show as well. So I'd love for you to help me out if you can by either subscribing to the podcast on iTunes. So if you want to go over and do that now, that would be awesome. If you have a couple of favorite episodes or if there's one favorite episode that you've really enjoyed, I would love you to share that with anyone who you think would get as much out of it as you have as well. And while you're in iTunes, if you can jump in and give it a review, that would be amazing. iTunes definitely helps out podcasts that have got some, some good ratings and reviews and some really interactive listeners. So I would really appreciate your help with getting to my goal of 50,000 in 2017. The show is also available over on YouTube. The links are always in the show notes, so you can um, head over there. So it's The Recovering Perfectionist on YouTube. There's a channel for that as well. So jump in and leave your comments. You can watch all of the episodes in video. So if you want to see what we look like and our crazy hand gestures and uh, facial expressions and all of that sort of thing, absolutely jump in. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel show as well, and then you'll be kept up to date when there's some uh, new episodes that come in there. So yeah, love your support. And if you want to shoot me an email, it's hello at 
clairebarton.com.au. Always happy to receive your emails and yeah, open up a conversation. All right, big love. I'll chat with you soon. Bye.